After making peace and biding his time, Liu Bei decides that it would be better to still be at war with one of his enemies, not because he cherishes the bloodshed and the loss of lives in battle, but because his alliance with Kong Rong would serve him better in the long run if Kong Rong was a little stronger for a little while longer. He does serve as a beneficial border between himself and those that would want to kill him. In the meantime, he's ended up picking up land he no longer needs, and his empire expands, although disjointedly. Now the decision is to destroy his enemy completely and hand the land over to Kong Rong, or keep parts of it for himself to ensure that his empire is even stronger. Welcome back to Total War Three Kingdoms, everybody. Yes, last episode was an interesting one. We ended up picking up some territory off to, uh, that doesn't really, that wasn't initially uh, ones that we wanted up here, as you can see. Uh, that's where our army is actually stationed, is at Baha'i. And the reason is we are at war with Huang Xiao. Uh, somebody who was of equal power according to some of the summaries that we were reading. And in the meantime, I wanted to get Kong Rong a bit of a, uh, addition to his empire, just to keep him a little stronger and keep him bordering uh, some of our stronger enemies out to the north over here. In the me uh, also, Cao Cao over here is still rather strong, though I do believe his feelings towards us are okay, but just to keep ourselves safe, we did end up picking up a secondary army over here with a uh, Gao Ding in charge of it. It's not great, but in, in couple with the uh, garrison that's sitting over here, both these buildings have garrisons in them. Uh, it's not that bad, and I'm not too, not too upset about it. We're gonna go ahead and upgrade our military complex over here though, to ensure that it's still upgrading and, and our garrisons are going. Everything else is about as good as I could expect it in the meanwhile. Except over here, but we're, we're working on converting these because we may end up keeping these. I'm not sure if, if I want to keep this and maybe the farmland and then give him their capital. But we'll make that decision when we take a look at some of the provinces later on. For now, there's not much more we can do here. Let's clear out some of these. Oh, Beihai was their capital. We literally swung in and just took their capital. Well then, I was not expecting that. All right then. <laughs> Liu Bei and Huang Xiao are now rivals. This one's oath-sworn kin was killed in battle against my army. What vengeance awaits? Ah, I killed one of one of those generals that uh, Guan actually ended up killing was close friends with Huang Xiao. Oh, the vengeance I'm sure he desperately wants now. Though he still is pretty okay with peace. Allegiance to Huang Xiao, opponent Liu Bei, Guan Hai. Our noble enemy has fallen in battle against us. Though we may not mourn their passing, they fought with honor for what they believe to be right and deserve our respect. That, I can agree with Liu Bei. I can agree with that very much so. We got the cryptographer. We'll take a look at that. That's the captured officer. Zhang Fei got new ranks. Spy promoted. Our spy got promoted. Uh, spy promoted general Suzi Zongshan uh, of, of Zongshan. One of our spies has been promoted to general thanks to their determination and clarity of purpose, providing them with opportunities to promote our cause. We're going to start being able to do some really cool things since he got promoted to general. Uh, that is very interesting. We can actually go up here and see out in Zongshan, he is a, a general in that town. Yeah, he's our spy, and he's got a little a little retinue of his own to command out here. Let's see here. Uh, they've given him the clay rat. Ooh. <laughs> Part of me wonders if this is them trying to tell us that we know he's a rat. Interesting. Interesting uh, thing to give him. Um... I don't know if there's much else we can do right now. We Okay, so here we go. 
So we can actually start spending spy points, his cover. So over time, your spy will actually build a cover and uh, they'll actually start uh, establishing and convincing uh, people to believe their lies as well as uh, establishing hopefully their own undercover network. What we can do, so right now we can disown him if we really want to, I, though I don't think that's gonna worry too much. He's 200 upkeep a turn. Undercover network. Your active spies help build your undercover network over time. This web of contacts and other covert assets will support your insidious ambitions, but may but may be unexpectedly challenged by a faction's own uh, covert defenses. Be prepared. So we're gaining two a turn from that, it looks like. We gain two of that a turn. And then over here is his personal cover. Uh, over time, your spies will establish a convincing personal cover, thereby allowing them to perform increasingly ambitious actions. The rate at which they establish cover increases with experience. We're gaining four per turn right now. And over time, we're gonna be able to spend these as currency to do things. Uh, we have enough right now to do interference. We can meddle in the faction's intelligence efforts, thereby diminishing their counter spying attempts and increasing our spies cover, which is great, but we spend uh, networks for that. Or we can accost traders, obstruct the faction's trade efforts, thereby diminishing their trade. I would think right now we might wanna do Interference. We'll spend our initial allotment of under, uh, our network and then basically bump our own cover so we can do better and better things. We'll meddle in their affairs. Let's go. Bad intelligence. Allowing for an exchange with, uh, with an informant, your spy receives word that he is in fact a double agent. Making ready to betray the spy to his masters. Ooh, what? If you play the spy game, you must prepare to pay the price for failure or bend the rules to your to meet your ends. Your undercover network might convince the informant to join, thereby building the web of intrigue further. Well, I don't have 45. We're going to have to cancel. There's little sense in further jeopardizing your spy's cover. Have the informant hunted down and slayed instead. Yeah, we're going to go down and kill the man who knows and just eat the cost, I think. just to keep him safe. What a bummer. What a bummer. I thought that helped and give us a little bit of a buff early on, but unfortunately didn't. Still, still, we're, we got a little intelligence going on over here. Um, Yuan Shao's coalition has faltered. Who will unite the people now? I don't know what this is, actually. And it looks like An Ping is over here. Han Fu, perhaps? Yeah, Han Fu. He's a trusting noble, and he's very, very small. I'm very worried about Yuan Shao, mostly, and he's getting a bit big for his britches. So is Yuan Shu, though. If we can get Huan Sh Yuan Shao to go to war with Yuan Shu, if he's not already at war. Yeah, he needs to be at war with Yuan Shu. He, I think he likes us. He loves us because of the treaties we have with him. Lord. We could get him to join our coalition. And it's the coalition to defeat barbarians. So, you know, it's a minor, it's a minor coalition. He does love us. But he's, he doesn't, it says he doesn't join existing alliances, so yeah, minus 15. He doesn't want to do it. He never joins existing alliances. There's no way I can convince him to join our coalition. I'd love to get him to, to war with somebody. I just don't know how I would go about doing that. I think for now I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, a little too big for my britches. We still have our own war going on over here. We know for for now Yuan Shou is not going to do anything for us, uh, against us. And we have a spy in there anyway to ensure it. It honestly might be better to get a spy over in Yuan Shu, but for, you know, for now, uh, I can't really do much about it. So that's going to be this season then. I think we're just going to move on to the next. Sao Sao wants something. Uh, let's see. He wants us to declare war on Sun Jian on behalf of Cao Cao. And he'll pay me a handful of dollars to do it. 
a handful of bucks. That's I have no interest in doing this. I know you're neutral towards us and you're superior to us. But why would I go to war on Sun Jian on behalf of you? Absolutely not. So we're just going to go ahead and reject this. I'm sorry, Cao Cao. Ooh, Zhang Yan just actually grew by a territory. His war with Zhang Jian is going well. Yuan Xiao vassalized Kong Rong. Oh, no. Autonomy guaranteed by Kong Rong. Coalition with Kong Rong left by... Uh, is that me? And his autonomy was guaranteed. We moved too slow on Kong Rong, unfortunately. Well, it looks like we're going to be keeping everything we take. Huang Xiao is getting vassalized. Jesus. When the people speak your name, they do so with a smile. They benefit under your wise and generous rule and their happiness all across. And there is happiness all across your faction. And now my mouse isn't working. There we go. So we became Beloved Lord, ten, plus 10 public order for five turns. So we went from cruel to beloved. Uh, that's very, very good. I'm glad to hear that. We especially need the public order now. All right. Construction complete on in Bahay and uh, Dong Lai. All right. We need, to, one of the things we really do need to worry about is marriage. We gotta find somebody who has somebody to marry. A free daughter would be great. Ooh, Dong Min has somebody to marry. How interesting to marry the man who took over after the one who uh, kidnapped my nephew. To receive a marriage or offer a marriage. So if we were to receive a marriage, let's see who she is. She's 52, so she's real old. Um, let's see, she's, we don't know what her skills are. She has a retinue. She's an officer, and a counselor, and a magistrate. She doesn't hate us. All right, well, we know Dong Min has somebody that could potentially try and marry. Let's see if he wants, well, does he want to unify? Absolutely not, okay. We could, we could make this work. We could absolutely make this work. Absolutely, we can just pay for it. Okay, we'll know, we know Dong Min has a wife. How bizarre if that's who we end up marrying. But we might be able to inherit their entire kingdom if they end up kicking it, which might not be a bad thing, and he'll very likely not last too long. So Dong Min is the only one with an open wife right now. I don't know how big his empire is right now, but I'm sure it's much smaller than it used to be. But I will marry Dong Paishan. We are receiving a marriage. We both don't want it, I, imag I imagine. We just don't get along. You know what? Because we don't get along, I know it seems interesting, and maybe we'll bounce to her to his mother, maybe? I don't know who that is uh, in an emergency situation, uh, but for now, I'm not going to worry about it. All right, let's take a look at how our healing is going here. And we definitely want to upgrade one of these. County school. Plus 4% character experience faction wide. Agricultural buildings, constru uh, minus 10% construction cost on them and increases character experience faction wide. A school could be interesting. Let's go, let's convert this first so we have more food. We got some level ups. Fury, plus eight instinct, plus 10 morale to in enemy territory, and a 25 charge bonus. This is just straight up great. Uh, Guile, cunning, enables guerrilla deployment. Ooh, that could be, that's a new ability. The unit can deploy outside the deployment zone. Oh, that's interesting. With him running in with cavalry, that could be a really great setup. Then we got reach over here, which is eight instinct, plus one available armies. Oh, that's really good too. 
and 25% campaign movement range on the map. Jesus, these are all really good for different reasons. The ability to just sneak him around with cavalry and flank would be incredible, and we'll definitely have to get that at some point. Fury is just straight up great, but I think we're gonna go with this because it, it allows for a bunch of great things. So we're gonna have to recruit uh, more for him. Oh, we get an extra army rather. We can get another army on the map, I think is what it meant. All right. Plus eight instinct, also good. Enables scare, which reduces nearby enemy morale. Ooh, that's awesome. And uh, plus 10 morale and own territory. So we'll get morale in enemy territory and own territory thanks to both of them. And then just straight up trust. Eight resolve, plus 10% armor for all spear infantry, 20% income from peasantry. Only if he's administered in a commandery, which he, he is not going to be. Not anytime soon, anyway. I like this one right now, just because it has all of its beneficial. Oh, we already have that. I'm dumb. This is what I was talking about. Scare. Yeah, yeah, this one. I'm taking that. I like it. I think that's neat. Uh, we are still going to be healing for some time, though, so I'm not going to be moving from here at all. I do want that fishing port, which we could easily, we should definitely snag it before Zan, uh, Zhang Chao takes it. Though I think Lu Bei has to be the one to take it. We'll wait another, another season. Maybe I will wait out winter. And then we'll be good. You are been, you've been vassalizing a lot of people, sir. And that's scare, starting to scare me. I appreciate the offer. And there is a temptation, I won't lie, to become someone's vassal and try and th overthrow them from the inside out. But I just, I'm too big. That is, you're right, it is my choice, sir. Uh, oh, he got somebody into a proxy war. Coalition with Yuan Shu. He commanded their vassal, Huang Xiao, to join a war. Dong Min signed a peace treaty with Yuan Xiao. Dong Min is slowly making peace with all of his enemies. Their master He Yi go to war with Huang Xiao. Are oh, they gonna try and take the rest? Han Fu's uh, joined a war alongside Huang Xiao. On Han Fu. Another war. Oh, all hell is breaking loose right now. We're starting to get a food deficit. We're gonna have to see if we can make up for that really quick. I think we're gonna go up this tree so we can get this plus one starting rank for cavalry. I think that's a very good pickup. So we're dropping lots and lots of money on trying to get some food. And I'd, I think we might wanna make a rush over here to try and grab this livestock area. I'm a little worried because we're not fully healed, but if it's not that well defended. I'm willing to take a peek. Doesn't seem like there's much in the way of defenses. So if we can grab this. We can get some, maybe some food. Oh, wait, we're at peace. Dang, we're at peace. I did not realize we had signed peace treaty. And I'm wondering if it's because the coalition ended or if I just did it last time and I just forgot because it's been a couple days. <laughs> okay, our assignments have ended. We can see if we want to fix that up. Guan Yu got cheerful. Plus six resolve, plus two authority, plus five satisfaction, and plus ten. He admires zeal, values sociability. He's a very cheerful man. Maybe because of the big vic the three dual victories he got in the last fight. China's vastness is matched only by the many exemplars of wisdom and might that tra traverse it. The following individuals of note are currently visiting our lands and we should not hesitate to engage the most promising of sir in service. Gao Sheng and a, and a couple others. We're kind of broke right now. I need to worry about people's moods. We might dismiss a few of these people, honestly. This guy hates us. Our spy hates us. 
And he's costing me a fridge ton of money. He's leading an army though, so he should be happy. Have a, I have a feeling, I have a feeling he's gonna freaking he's gonna turn on us. I have a feeling he's gonna turn on us big time. Though he doesn't get along with the generals in his army, nor does he get along with Yuan Sho, so I don't know, maybe not. All right, buddy, who are you and where'd you come from? You're a champion. So that actually could be really, really good. And you have all kinds of bonuses to it. So you might be great to grab as a general, Shichu. And that immediately makes me want to grab you, but I don't know if I have enough. Not yet. I will on the next season. I'll give him eight more resolve. He's actually going to be almost legendary through this. Uh, Tao Ying. He's very close to legend uh, to legendary resolve, which might make him a legendary character. If I can give him more resolve, I don't think I can. If I need to put him. Uh, in the other army as well. All right, we've got some things we need to do on the ne in the next season. Well, well, well. Dong Min wants us in a coalition. He's gonna pay us some money for it. I wonder if we could get food from him to do it. I'm a little concerned because I think Dong Min is pretty much hated by everybody. Moreover, let's see. He's vengeful. He reacts to negative diplomatic events harshly. Remembers diplomatic events very long. We've, we've looked at this, but I need to ref, uh, remember. Never stays a subordinate. Opposes power. Dislikes all large or aggressive factions. Treacherous. He, and he, so he's cunning as well. He's treacherous. Exploits strategic weaknesses of enemies. May unexpectedly break treaties with weaker factions. Well, as long as we stay stronger, he'd be fine. Diplomatic attitude only has a limited influence in the diplomatic situation. I don't know if I want to get into a... Uh... Yeah, I don't know if I want to get into... Into Same one with idea. you, Dong Min. I'm sorry. I wonder if I could get into one with one of the bigger boys. Yuan Shu... I don't know. Cao Cao might be much, much scarier. And, uh, he, he just told Kong Rong to go to war. The Han Empire and Zhang Yan. Now he's asking Yuan Shu, Cao Cao's asking Yuan Shu to go to war. bizarre how's our food we're at minus eight food now it's not not good at all and it's winter well I really want to grab this fishery over here so we're gonna start making our way over in one more turn turn we're gonna be generating two more food which is not good enough um, we need this for sure the fishing port That'll be the last bit over here. Until then, we need more food, so. Okay, we got a farm manager. Which is good, and buildings. Okay, so what we want to do is first we want to see if we can assign somebody in Peng Cheng to help with food. 50% food production. 4% food wide production assignment immediately. That's who we have to drop. He us uh, one of the generals we wanted But I think this is what we need to do And dong we're gonna put Shi Chu as well for more food production and dong Lai because we have farms there This should be very good for us And then we're gonna go back to just regular dong and we're gonna go ahead and say give us more money Just from industry perfect this should fix our problem. Cuomo. I will not support Yuan Shu's claim to emperorship at all. No way in hell.
You arrogant opportunist. Hey, holy crap. And now suddenly we have 14 food coming in with good, good money. Hoof. Yuan Shao formed a coalition with Dong Min. Yuan Shao commanded their vassal Kong Rong to join a war against... Oh, South. So they are going to war against each other. All these people are going to war on his behalf. Yep, yep, yep. Brothers in arms. It's been a long time since you've seen your your, sor your sworn kin. China is vast and the country's uh, needs are many. You've been separated in the name of progress for so long. Upon being reunited, there is little anyone can do to stop you embracing overjoyed at finally seeing one another again. Uh, so me and Guan Yu just got really close and we got a bunch of satisfaction with Guan Yu for 10 turns. Yeah. We're getting really, that makes sense. We've been fighting together for so long. China's va- oh, let's see. Following individuals a note are visiting. Got it. Buildings. Got it. And then everything else that we've already seen. Okay. We're gonna annex, because that's what we do. I know we spend a lot of it, but it's just peaceful and quick, quicker that way to just grow an army. Meanwhile, I'm thinking we spend a huge chunk of change to grab Zhang Fen. He's not going to be happy with Z uh, Han Min. Uh, hopefully it won't be that big of a deal. But he's a bandit champion, so he's going to be super valuable to us. I'm going to go ahead and grab him and just add him to this army. And we can start using this army to move around a bit and maybe even start engaging in some of the smaller empires to eat them up. All right, we've got some reform. An extra trade agreement and we unlock a bunch of other buildings. Provincial iron tools. Improves agriculture. You know what? Right now. Ooh, and then we've got up here too. Income from commerce. Income from industry. It's just straight up more money. Let's grab the more, the flat more money. We can buy anything we need if we, if we ever run out. All right, we're gonna let that heal up. We're gonna let them keep going. So as we can see, beyond his vassals and I think us specifically, he is uh, pretty much hated by everybody. So I'm wondering if we can do anything. Yeah, he doesn't mind us at all. Um, I wonder if I can get him to go to war with Yuan Shu, if he's not already. He's at war with Cao Cao, which is interesting. Actually, so if Yuan Shu... Are you at war with Cao Cao as well? No. So if I can get you to go to war with Yuan Shu, and have you guys have a three-way war... So I'm gonna pay him a little bit of money for a non-aggression pact, just for now. Um, we can afford it. I don't want to fight him right now. I have genuinely no interest in fighting him. But I don't see a way to actually ask him to go to war. So as long as we're just not being attacked by him, I'm happy. He's revered. I don't even know what that means, but that sounds scary. He is really low on food, however, and we are not. I'm wondering if he's willing to buy some food off of us. If I give you four food, you're rich in cash. I can get 2,000 flat for four food. Yeah, I'll do it. And enjoy your food. I'm, I don't mind basically feeding him a little bit, just a little bit, keep his people happy, keep him close away from the brink in the hopes that uh, we may be able to butter him up, keep everybody pleased with us and try to get them to hate each other. I want your livestock farm. What do you want for livestock farm? You want Dong Lai? You know what? I'll just take your farm at some point. Are you a vassal of somebody? He ye, huh? Quite And you don't want my independence, really. We could make it work.
Where is he, Yi? He's over here somewhere, but he's considered weaker. And he's really low on food. And if I convince Huang Shao to break, I can get him to go to war, make him independent, and then go to war on him at some point. He'll go to war with him. I'll need military access to go through. He has very little. F I took his capital. There's not much he can do. I w basically I want I want to wait before I do anything. I want to get this last bit of uh, Dong Hai. The Yellow Turban Rebellion looks like it's going getting declared war on. Whoop de do. Han Empire and Zhang Yan. All right, easy enough. People are mostly happy. I like kind of keeping this up so I can keep an eye on it. Couple more turns and he'll make it. We could get him into a forced march. Can't get him there this turn though. Some buildings have finished up. Now we have a decision over here. State workshops, basically we can get uh, an additional just income bo bonus or we can get uh, minus 10% corruption. At the top, we've got minus 15% corruption or just flat money. Let's go with the corruption for now. It's a lot of money, but I want to keep the upgrades rolling. And I'll hold out so we have more reserve capacity because I just started going up the tree for the other one, so I won't worry about that too much. And we'll bump this a little bit. And that's it for this turn. More yellow turban wharfs fighting. Liu Yu. Oh no, Gong Du. As Liu Yu is going to war with Gong Du. Got it. Yellow turbans. A hero's aid. You read a report about one of your generals who beat six enemies single handedly. Well, that could have been any of them. Largely due to the courage, speed, and loyalty of their horse. Heroes have always had something or someone to help them achieve their rightful destiny. It could be a loyal follower, a trusted steed, a book of wisdom, or a weapon of unique properties. But they all fulfill the same role. Whether it is fate or by your very own will and actions, such a thing has come into your possession. The real test is figuring out how best to make use of it, or them, to help achieve your goal. Chance to gain an auxiliary, an auxiliary, an ancillary, there we go. What do you mean chance? Did I not get it? Is it the Book of the Mountain? I'll lose authority, but I'll gain cunning. The corruption is really good, though, so I don't know. Maybe somebody else. Honestly, the 5% ammunition jump could be great. I'm going to give it to him. Alright, let's, um... Let's go back to just regular movement. We're still not going to get there this turn, which is hilarious. We got one more turn to go. I'm coming to annex you. Don't you worry about a thing. I'll be there soon. We'll go with this one before we up our farm, because this will make it cheaper to upgrade our farm. By another 10%. Long game, long game. Sao Sao wants military access, and I think I'm going to give it to him. I'm down to take this. I'm willing to also maybe feed you a little more food in the future, sir. But 
I have no interest in actually fighting you, but I, I think you're gonna go up and around because you're still at war with them, right? You on show? Yeah, let's do it. Enjoy uh, your access. I'm hoping Yuan Shao doesn't hate me for it, but we'll see. Okay, Kong Rong's getting yanked into yet another war with Gong Du. Yuan Shao is now fighting Yuan Shu. And now I'm starting to think it might be worth jumping into war with Yuan uh, against Yuan Shao here. He's fighting a war on so many fronts. He's fighting Yuan Shu, he's fighting Cao Cao. I think it's time to go to war with Yuan Shao. Uh, let's let's take this last bit of Han Empire, and then we'll, we'll, we'll get ready to move in on him. All right, we're gonna take you in. Thank you so much. Now we have you. Let's get some more food going. And you guys are plenty happy immediately because it's just a peaceful annexation. And then you guys can kind of do your own thing. I think I'm still going to keep this general here for the most part and take our main our main crew in. Kong Rong means it's going to be kind of the... I feel bad because Kong Rong is going to get yanked into this and he's not going to want to and he's probably going to be who we have to focus on fighting. So let's start moving back. And in about a year, as long as this, this is still happening, we can jump into this. Yep, all right, Dong Hai is fully ours. Uh, Tao Ying gained honest. I can appreciate that. See, anybody who who is honest is, is good in Liu Bei's books. A couple people have joined the courts. Construction's finished. Actually, let's talk to Dong Min here. Yeah, no, I can't. I can't. I can't join his coalition because he's got uh, Yuan Shao, unfortunately. Which means we'll be going to war with Dong Min here in a minute. But yeah, this is going to be a giant war of powers. We are on the cusp of a gigantic clash between so many. Um, unfortunately, we're not in the greatest position to join them, but we will be soon. Gong Sun Zan. Where are you, sir? You want a non-aggression pact? I'm okay with that. Do you have a wife? You do not have a wife. Issue ultimatum. Threaten this faction with war should they not accept your deal. If they refuse to accept your deal, war will be declared between you. Oh, that's... I don't know where you are. Oh, you're a vassal of Yuan Shao? Okay, Yuan Shao just vassalized the person who just tried to get a non-aggression pact with us. How cute. Uh, and he just commanded him to go to war. You know, the other thing we could do... He Yi declared war on him. Um, we're all jumping on this guy. We also could, like, maybe nudge a couple people to, you know, go against the war. For instance, if we decide... I don't know. Gong Sun Zan is the most powerful of them. And... He he loves us? I genuinely don't know where he is. But if we say, hey, we'll support your independence. What do you want for it? You want basically everything I have. So absolutely not. Kong Rong. Kong Rong, buddy. I'm telling you. I'll support your wow, you do not have any, any at all interest in, in me supporting your independence. Base diplomatic stance to target faction. You are in love with your boy. Han Fu. You absolutely want to be free. 
I could even probably squeeze some money out of you to be free. You're rich enough. Why don't you make me some payments over some turns? How badly do you want to be free? You just want to give me a flat payment. I will support your independence and you'll give me a payment. Let's go. Works for me. We're about to go to war. We're jumping in on this puppy. I'm not becoming your vassal. You're too busy being at war. Okay, it's reform time. One of my favorite times. Plus four military supplies and some new military units, it looks like. Uh, Halberd infantry. That could be really useful. And we're about to go to war, honestly, so let's go ahead and grab it. And we get new granaries out of the deal. How's our spy doing? Spread malicious rumors about a character, thereby significantly diminishing their satisfaction within court. Okay. Empower trade, manipulate the faction's trade efforts, thereby increasing your own trade power. I don't, are we, do we have a trade deal with him? No. Build undercover network, acquire additional covert relations and assets within the faction, thereby allowing you to bolster your undercover network overall. Sure. In the shadows, your spy sends forth agents to further strengthen their position with new contacts and assets, but the activities have not gone unnoticed by the local authorities. Questions are being asked and security is a risk. With considerable resources at its disposal, your undercover network might provide access to safe houses and couriers to help continue to work away from prying eyes. Go to ground and network by proxy. Go to ground and network. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Uh, build an undercover network. Our spies succeed in developing their undercover network uh, there is now a web of people with vital connections indebted to our agents' debts that can be called upon whenever the information service is needed. Neat. We can discredit a faction. Just make his court weaker. Basically, his entire court becomes starts falling apart. Let's hold out until we're a little closer and we can maybe benefit from that. But that could be really great is to make all of his court just miserable. I like that idea. The bandit queen! She's around somewhere. She's a bandit. Uh, she's destructive. She prefers choosing destructive, ruthless options. Commanding, her ultimate war goal is always to force others to become her tributaries and siphon off as much gold as possible. Um, and strategically belligerent in wars, prefers to move and act quickly, doesn't stop to consolidate. Non-aggression pact. More wars, more wars. Lu Bu! Ah, Lu Bu's around! Uh, if you don't know who Lu Bu is, look him up. Dude's like the greatest warrior of all time, but literally betrays everyone he serves. It's great. Faction succession, Dong Min. Succeeding Dong Min is Lu Bu. New blood comes to lead another faction, carrying on their hopes and dreams. Lu Bu's in charge of the faction? Oh god. I think that's what happens, I think, in the book, but I'm not sure. Duan Wu Festival. The Duan Yu Wu Festival is a momentous day. Drinks are poured freely and the smell of food fills the air. As you celebrate the honor of Ku Yuan, the team pulls their dragon boats through the river to, with much clamor and cheering from the banks. By a truly breathtaking slim margin, your team rose to victory. Glory is yours. Good omens. Plus 10 to public order. Okay, so that means we can talk to Lu Bu now, which is great. He despises me. Uh... A lot. Not you again. So, Lu Bu, he's destructive. He's much like a bandit. He destroys things. He's defiant, never stays a subordinate, opposes power, and is a warrior. Um, only offers peace if in real trouble. Uh, do you have a, a wife I could take? Receive marriage. Same woman? I should get married. What do you want? Just cash? You want literally everything I have. All right, Lu Bu. Thank you, appreciate you. Um, I don't know if he's waiting for me to declare war. We have a treaty with him. 
If I issue a declaration, we'll become untrustworthy. I'm hoping that Han Fu is going to declare. Oof, we have a lot of food. It's going to keep on going up now that we have Dong Hai. We have so much food. I wonder if we could just start feeding everybody. And farms. All right, we got some new farms growing, some building upgrades, nice and easy. I like the way things are looking. I still want to go to war. And I'm not sure how I'm going to make that work since I have a treaty. Uh, we'll have to figure that out. Zhang Fei grabbed, gained energetic. I'll take it. Enemy ambush discovered. Nowhere near me. Lu Bu wants me in a coalition. Oh, okay. The Yellow River Coalition. You ha- Oh, it's Lu Bu is the thing. He doesn't hate me anymore. Let's go ahead. Let's jump into the coalition of the Yellow River. Does that mean we're on, on the side of Yuan Shao now? I think it does. Which means I need to go to war with Cao Cao instead. Okay, there's a peace treaty between Cao Cao and Lu Bu. Peace treaty for them. Lu Bei, I'm in. Two brothers, their bonds forged in war and strengthened by strife, sit around a campfire in the dimming light of the evening. They share tales of glory and memories of friends long gone. Their smiles are wistful and their thoughts are bittersweet, but they are glad above all to have one another for support. Sweet, we love each other some more. Relationship continues to deepen. Okay. I think we're gonna go to war with him because he's a he's part of He Yi. Uh Let's just do it. I'm going to war and I'm taking the rest of your stuff. That means he Yi goes to war with us, but I'm okay with that. We're going to clean this up. Um, it's a large city here, so we're probably going to have to go over here and siege them down. This will be the battle that we need to win. So we're going to swing in. See what they've got. That's his warriors here. We'll see what we can do. If we can take this down, the livestock farm will be nothing. He wants my labor recruiter? I'm good. Let's Let's see if we can get him in a war. Uh, let's see if we can get Lu Bu in a war against He Yi and keep He Yi very, oh, very so occupied. Zerong has declared war on us. I acknowledge this. War is declared. Zerong has declared open war upon us. Your ministers urge you to respond in kind. Your generals have stated their readiness. Uh, they are confident and eager to put this vile pretender and their meager armies to flight and ruin. He won't join. But you on Shu will, so let's go for it. All right. And now he has to deal with that. Jade Bird. Over tea, you tell your general of your dream of a Jade Bird. The general takes a long sip of their tea, places the cup down, and looks you in the eye. A vision of a jade bird is an auspicious prophecy. The jade indicating imperial matters and the bird, uh, a being that can traverse the gap between earth and heaven. Guan Yu and Lu Bei get closer now and bonus experience for Lu Bei. And now they're all sitting here. We can start sieging them. Three turns until they're out of supplies, eight turns before they worry about surrendering. Let's get tunnels and see if we can do something with that. And get a couple of those, and we'll start sieging them down. Uh, 
Huang Xiao has a whole other army over here. We'll see what he ends up doing. We could always retreat back to Beihai and re relax over here while things go, you know, either south for us or, or worse. Um, we have a general army over here. Now, Dong Hai does not have a gar- uh, It has a small garrison. We could definitely bring our own troops back to deal with Zerong because we're at war with him. And we might actually give them some experience in the process. Let's start moving them. I think we can start upping all the cities to the next level. We'll gain more prestige this way and it'll be good for us. It's also gonna be kind of expensive to do. So we need to do it kind of a city at a time. But better walls and all that stuff is going to be invaluable, especially once now that we're starting to look at getting into some wars over here. More public order across our land just to keep things kind of intact and in tow. And we'll see what happens over here during the siege. I don't know why everybody wants my labor recruiter. It's probably the growth, the population growth. I should give that to, to one of my uh, commanders who are who are just in a position of doing a job. Yeah, every, all hell is breaking loose over here. Everybody's fighting everybody else. Okay, so he is going to go over there and he is going to go for Dong Hai Fishery. <laughs> Sun Jian, Liu Biao, Huang Xiao. He declared war on Liu Biao. Zerong signed a peace treaty with He Yi. Is it you that's unhappy? Is it you that's unhappy? Why? You have a grudge against Zheng Yang. I kind of want to keep you all in the same army for right now. Gonna make our way over there. His army's not that big. It's going to be a very easy, I think, get for him. We might be able to do some good damage, though. Um, but it's over here, you know, that I want to move down into here, the farmland, and, and maybe strike at him there. In the meantime, we're going to keep sieging, and it seems like that's not going to stop anytime soon. Though we are losing a lot of food over the winter. We might have to break siege. We will sign a non-aggression pact with the Gong. Okay, hang on. You want a non-aggression pact with us incredibly badly. You're willing to make us payments and make us payments of $43 over every the course of 10 turns. I can make it 76. What if we bring this over a hundred? No, can't, huh? I'll take a lower upfront payment with for a higher back end payment for non-aggression with you. I had a feeling he was gonna fight. We can always try though. Let's take a look at the map. Yeah, we. I mean, this is gonna be difficult for us. We might as well try. And see how this goes. So, this is going to be considered a valiant defeat in the eyes of everybody. The enemy are assaulting us in the settlement, but here's the thing. It's winter, which is good for us defensively. And uh, what we want to do basically is just keep everybody together. And just defend wherever they're assaulting from. They're way over there. So it looks like they're all just gonna attack from over there. Basically, as soon as they get within range of the, these towers, they'll uh, make that work. And then all we want is just them to just block. And if they try to go around, they will we'll hit them with this, but I don't know how that's like that. I don't know how they're going to do that. So we'll leave these guys over here for now. Just fill it up. And I guess we'll just see how this battle goes. 
the defensive begins, and hopefully it won't be that bad. The war has officially been brought to Liu Bei's front door. It was bound to happen in time, but the fishing port wasn't expected. We are outnumbered greatly. But lucky us, they decided to attack us during the winter, which provides them quite the penalty when approaching. Liu Bei knows this and plans to use it to the best of his ability. Well, his soldiers anyway, as they remember his training. They will focus on one attacking point, it seems, and in doing so, they will do the same. Let the fight for the fishery commence. They've come in range of our towers. The plan is simple. Clog the towers as tightly and as dangerously as we can and rain them down with arrows as they approach once they enter our range. After they've engaged in melee range with our soldiers, after we back up a bit, we'll pull a flank of pikemen out to the uh, west side. Push around and hit them from behind, sandwiching them between our men and the towers. We may be outnumbered, but with that kind of defensive strategy, we may be able to at the very least hold them and dwindle them down to such a number that whatever ends up taking this place is insignificant. It's the plan. It's not a great one, <laughs> but it's what we have. I'm not quite sure what else I could do with this situation. I'm slowly backing my men up because I didn't realize they were going to hit range of our men before we got range of theirs. The, t the towers don't do a great deal. We still don't want them clogging, but we want them getting hit by arrows first. And then once they start getting hit by arrows like they are now and once they're in range, we then will be moving our melee men up to clog the towers. But we want them kind of permanently within range of our, of our arrows. I definitely should have moved those men up a little sooner. But the clash is about to begin. Now, we have no general here, and they do. And that general is going to do a number on my men and could single-handedly win them this fight. The clash starts. Cavalry coming in, trying to break through the front line. Luckily, we have pikemen there to stop them. They're not going to be able to do much. The there's the general. Now, also lucky for Liu Bei and his men. Uh, the general is a scholar. He isn't going to do too much to our soldiers. And in the back, I have some of my archers focusing on their archers, and we just get them to break. Now, this is a huge, huge win for us. Getting their archers to break means they no longer have uh, the support fire that they need. And now our archers, as you can see, uh, they are going to be starting to fire on the melee here to provide them a, uh, a suppressive fire support. And now, here comes the flank. Around the side, they'll wheel around. And once they come wide, <clears throat> they'll move into the rear. One of the soldiers has already moved in to hit this flank, and now they are pulling a little wider to hit a wider one. The towers have such insane range. They only just now stopped firing at the archers. Their archers now hitting our men. A few bound to fall. They lack shields and are being hit by the back. But in they charge. Hitting their rear, a bunch of them begin to fall. And our pikemen are doing a decent job at the back of this. At the front, however, our numbers are dwindling. The generals are proving to be a huge problem. There are four of them here now. It's at this point we have our last bit of men that was way in the back push up. They'd been walking here for a while, but the reinforcements are welcome. The archers still working on the giant blob of melee units now sandwiched between our uh, pikemen. Still a clear evidence that we are outnumbered here. But Blue Bay's men are nothing if not mor uh, high in morale. Very unlikely to give up easily. This is the general and the pikemen are focusing on him. Now luckily he's still on his horse. But if we could take out their general, their morale could plummet. And that could help sway this battle. 
but taking him down is not going to be an Shut easy up. feat. No matter who comes out the victor, the losses are going to be insanely large. Him with double the men of ours and our men just barely holding up. Bodies of both colors are going to litter this snow field. Bring a little bit more color than usual. A bit of a miracle, their men begin to break and run, escaping the battlefield, perhaps seeing our more of our reinforcements flanking in from behind to rebolster our numbers. But our men just collapsed in on theirs. All that's left is a small contingent here in the general. Now everybody can focus fire on both of them. And what seemed like a losing battle doubled more than outnumbered by two times. We end up the victor. And this fishing port that I assumed I was going to lose is one that we're going to be keeping. The general will die. Their men will fall. And our men will stay standing. Well, that was a horrendously unexpected win. <laughs> uh, that was not supposed to go that way. That was supposed to be an incredible defeat, but I don't, we, we set up really, really well. They were all coming from one area, so we were able to set up arrows that led them in, and we were able to flank around them with a few other pikemen that just ended up winning it for us. Um, I think we're just gonna take the replenishment. We could take the money and the unity, which is nice, don't get me wrong, but I think after that loss, I think the replenishment would go a long way. Zarong has been succeeded by Zabu. I guess that was that was the leader, right? Was he in that fight? Faction Regency succeeding Zabu is Regent Deng Nin Ninkin. While a new heir has taken over the faction, they are as yet too young, too young to control it. They must rely on the integrity of their court officials and administrators until they come of age. I think we killed him. <laughs> yeah, I think he was in that battle. If he wasn't, then he was. There was another battle that happened. Yeah, Deng Deng Kian is not doing so hot here. Uh, jumping into a war that they may not have wanted to be a part of in general. Things are still going okay over here, though we are having a hard time with food. Um, I'm hoping that they're going to drop soon. We're going to continue the siege, though. And it's reformation time, so maybe military supplies can be something we can focus on. Military markets. We also got a bunch of other stuff up there. We'll just grab the military supplies for now. And it'll help us a little bit. This is just, we've gone into like kind of a powder keg situation here in China uh, that we need to pay a bit of attention to. And maybe taking some shorter term decisions might not be a bad thing. Oh, of course, Kong Rong. I, I appreciate you wanting to throw me a ton of money because you are very, very, very rich. Um... You're full up on trade agreements, huh? You look like you need a lot of food, though, and we have a lot of it. You want to drop me some money over time? All right, let's do it like that. I'll give you seven food, and you're going to give me two grand up, two and a half grand up front, and then 162 uh, over the course of 10 turns. Kong Rong, we were supposed to be much closer than we were. You know what I'm saying? Oh, they're coming out to do They're just coming out. Okay, this is going to be another big fight, and this could, de this will likely determine how things go. Okay, so they came to meet us on the field. They're out there somewhere. And if we look around, there's not a lot of place to set up, though we could give some cavalry over to Zhang again, as we did last time. And we can drop him in the trees over here to approach at a time where we are ready for them. So we'll put them all in the trees over here, hopefully where they cannot be seen. We're gonna put Guan down, uh, Guan Yu rather, on his own. And we're just gonna leave it like this because he's gonna enter, I'm hoping, some duels that he can win. All right, here we go again. Once again, the battle is brought to them. As they siege the capital of their newly sworn enemy, 
the enemy's troops leave the city walls and confront them on the open field. Better to fight them when their stomachs are full and their courageous and morale are high than to fight them when they are only desperate to leave the city. Smart on their part, as their numbers double our own. And the experience of their generals is certainly nothing to scoff at. The decision is made to take all three generals of our army and plunge themselves into the back line, chasing their archers away as much as possible. Meanwhile, the cavalry will end up flanking them as they move into position with archers to lay heavy fire on their troops as a sword and shield, everyday run-of-the-mill soldier, charges into ours. We are still far outnumbered and potentially far outmatched, but we've overcome worse odds before. The archers line up with the pikemen at the front to guard them. As the battle begins and time pushes on, the enemy forces have yet to come into view. Far out in the distance, a flag can be seen as our generals rush forward. Guan shortly followed behind by Zhang. Surrounded by cavalry and the torrential downpour of the rain crushing them, Zhang and Guan, the god of war, begin to flank the enemy as they come into view, but not before flaming arrows start hitting our men. Past the enemy line, through the first set of militia, the cavalry rush into the archers, immediately setting them running. Not far behind, the generals and other commanders are following with the rest of the men and their retinue. The god of war eager to see blood on the field. It has been over a year since he's seen combat. In midfield, the rest clash. Things are looking good for our men up front guarding the uh, archers. One enemy troop is already running in fear. The other is now just breaking their morale as they try to bust through. Our archers having free fire at the enemies in midfield doing massive, massive amounts of damage to them as they can't hold their shields up in front of them, being massacred from behind. A beautiful stand-up for our army. Off to our western flank, Zhang and Guan stay together, charging into battle as brothers, as they always have. An entire regiment of men firing on them just to try and stop them as they crash through more archers and pikemen. Swinging wildly, he takes up multiple men at a time. Back to back, they fought this fight many times and won. Hellfire rains down on both their allies and our men alike. And now, a huge charge with the general up front. To our right flank, it seems. This could be bad. If they crash into us, uh, and we are unable to defend, then we're gonna have a problem. More so, as the battle continues, we're starting to realize while we hold our own well, ammo is running low, and without ammo, we can't stop them from coming in at us. He's bringing a huge contingent of men, and while most of them are untrained peasants and uh, basic militia, their numbers are monstrous. There's so much more that came in from the back back there much more than uh, than we initially saw. A fourth general entered the field. Now they charge forward to meet our blades with theirs. Zizu is in this battle, and he himself is jumping into the front line and doing as much damage as he can. Now luckily, I believe he's a scholar, and so a scholar isn't great in combat. They'll hold their own, but they could easily get outnumbered. And if our generals decide to swing over this way and do their thing with him, then he might be dead faster than he'll know what happened. Liu Bei, however, has left this area to try and help his uh, battle brothers out in the field. More of their men coming in for a flank around, crashing into our sides. Ugh! Oh. That's not a good engagement for us as our men begin to fall. I hope we're able to hold off. Shot! 
our own archers out of ammo, they draw their blades and push themselves into the masses. However, their general is already in the back line. No, this is Lu Bei. Lu Bei hasn't left yet. I thought he was gone. No, he's leaving now. As Lu Bei leads the battle, look at the rain of fire. They all focus on him. This is dangerous. But Lu Bei must do what he has to to save his people. Ride through the men. Chase them off. Watch them all fall as the horse just collides with them. After doing a number on those archers, Liu Bei heads exactly to where his other brothers in arms are. Guan and Zhang have uh, engaged, it seems, some more enemies, and Liu Bei is going to join the area where they are to make sure that they get the buff. All three of them attacking one of their generals. If they can take out the generals, perhaps their uh, soldiers' morale will drop low enough that it doesn't matter that we're outnumbered heavily. But their morale will break and we'll be able to run them down as they cower in fear to our prowess. Guan desperately wants to fight, but none would challenge his duel. None wanted to face him or any of our generals, and I can't say I blame them. Our men are still holding, though it seems very slowly that they're getting crushed, and more men jump into the battle to throw numbers at ours, and that's when our archers begin to waver and break, running for their lives. Not willing to throw their lives down, I guess, for Liu Bei and his dream of a unified China. Not now. This is a bad sign for us, unfortunately. While we definitely had a good early start to the battle, it's not going terribly well for us any longer. Sheer numbers are destroying us, and more and more of our men are breaking and running for their lives. In the back end, though, the generals are still fighting. They've wiped out most of the archers back here, and the one of the generals. I believe? Is that a general's horse? That might be a cavalry's horse, actually. Oh, uh, it's our generals. They've gotten off their horses. Ah, and two other generals are here now. Ah, there goes one. One general down is going to be great for the morale. You can see some of their men running off, and now they're going to try and chase down this one, it seems, on horseback. I don't know how well this is going to go. Liu Bei is determined, and quickly they get sandwiched and swiped at by our two strong generals. Liu Bei mostly body blocking, it seems, at this point. And another general dies! Two generals! We can see why these three work together, have befriended one another, and have grown so close with one another over the course of the past few years. They truly are synergistic and, and true, truly uh, brothers in, in war. However, if we go back to our Brothers in War's troops, you can see more and more of our men have backed up and run. And while the de de uh, desolation of two of their generals is a great win for us, unfortunately, it's not nearly enough. The morale of these troops is too high. They're doing too much work here, and they still have a general among them, helping them. One of theirs is breaking, but others are rushing forward. Even more of them. And back here, those who have broken are getting back together and running back into battle. Well before our men who have broken are ready at all. I think it's safe to say that this battle has been lost. Our generals live, and while we've taken out a couple of theirs, there's not much we can do. Alright, Dean, this will be tacked onto the end. I got interrupted for a second there. Well! Our first defeat, and one that is earned and deserved. I was well in over my head, and I need to rethink my tactics. Now, luckily, all of my generals survived, uh, and we're making plenty of money to replenish our forces, and luckily there's a city we can retreat to. On the plus side, we did kill one of their generals in the process, uh, and we almost killed a couple others, but weren't able to manage it. So, we'll lick our wounds and head back for now. And uh, we can quickly spend some money to swap out some of our forces for better forces that are going to be a little bit more replenished. Um, but we'll see. Hang on, I'll show you. So let's put him back in the city. Where you can restash up. And what we can do is we can actually go over to these. These guys will come back in a minute. But if we wanted to, we could just swap these guys. 
They'll be much stronger when they show up. And we could probably afford to go with some better cavalry at this point as well. So it might not be a bad idea to do that. Okay. So we'll replenish our army some with some better troops, and then we'll assault this capital, or maybe we'll just take the farm in the next couple of seasons. The war has only started, and we were due a loss at some point. We ended up getting a cryptographer. We lost this book of, of Book of Mountains and Seas, apparently. And everything else is fine. It's a long way to go for uh, Liu Bei, but it's far from a setback that we can't come overcome. We'll win. I guarantee it.